Chester. It's got its director's chair out, look. <laughs> I think you're going to go through that if you're not careful. You're trying to say I'm a fat No, I'm trying to say that the bottom of that chair is someone stabbed him with a knife. Yeah, it does look a bit iffy. And as the director, you now need to say, action. Ready? Yeah. Action. Right, you join us here in Chester, somewhere <laughs> near Liverpool. And we have this 432 over here that we're going to start today. It's hasn't, how long has it not ran for, roughly? Two years. 20 years this has been stood here. So this is a 436, isn't it? It is a 436, yeah. Yeah. So as I said, this is a 436. Oh, it's definitely going. Oh my god! <laughs> it's, got <laughs> it's got a lot of stuff in it. This is like a warehouse. This is like macro, but yeah. for tank parts. I think you need to wear that to protect yourself. Oh, it's the even sun. got the uh, headphones in it. Oh, the uh, intercom works. Hmm. Just if we can get the engine to work. Oh, basically, I'm going to make my way over and open the hatch. You up. No, I just want more white on. Link lead. <laughs> right, let's start with the injector pump. Okay. And just, I mean, that's the main thing I'm concerned about. We'll get that freed up before we try and do anything. So, Seb, will you pass me the, uh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Right. Well, it's not looking awful. Trapped up. And can you see the see the pumps all moving? Yeah. And it's just a little bit dry in there, so I'm gonna put the WD40. There's a good old lathering of that. Because if this jams wide open when she first starts, that is gonna be a bit scary. Right, so we are now just freeing off the pump before we start it. It, was, it wasn't jam solid like they usually are. I think the main reason for that is probably because the vehicle is still running kerosene. It doesn't go off like diesel does, or some diesel, shall we say, modern diesel. Um, so it hasn't made the... The reason these stick is because the, the diesel in the top of the pump turns into like a gel, and it, it's not rust. They don't seize through rust. They're oh, bloody rude of them, isn't it? Going on holiday, and we're stuck here fixing old junk. So, it's it's the diesel turns into a gel over time, which that makes the pump stick. Not not the fact they've actually seized up with water. So, uh, usually, with modern fuel, you could park something, and within two years the pump would seize up or get stuck. So this rack here, when I'm moving, is basically the operation it does when you're revving it. Now, when the, when, the, when the rack is stuck, it, it could be stuck in this position, which is off, so it would crank and it would never get any fuel and it would never, it would never start. It can also stick in that position, which is maximum revs, which means when it does start, it revs flat out, so you'd have no control whatsoever over your throttle, which is a bit exciting, and that's not what you want on a vehicle that's been parked up for, for several years because you're also likely to have oil leak. I've slackened off all the injector um, lines there, so when we crank it, there's no chance of it starting anyway. And I just want to make sure that it's starting to inject fuel out of each one. And another thing we'll do, fingers crossed the electric fuel pump in the back will work, we'll turn the ignition on, get the fuel priming, and with, with, with the engine off and these cracked, if, if fuel's bleeding out of one of those without the engine cranking over, we know that the plunger in the pump is stuck. And that'll also mean that it won't start properly or at all. So if that's the case, I haven't brought enough tools with us to take that to bits, so let's hope that it isn't like that. But we'll know that we've got a problem before we go any further. The other thing that I found that's a bit, a bit worrying on this, this normal pipe here that feeds the alternator, that was off. So I'm a bit worried about that. We also got a lot of oil leaking out the top of the heat exchanger there. That isn't great. Hello. Right, we're going to try these batteries that came with it. The Wasser. Oh, there is a bit of spark in them. Who knows? Might work. My set is on. Now, the ignition. I can hear fuel. 
Or should I can say I can hear air. I can't see any fuel leaking out the tops of them, which is good. So I'm going to give it a crank now. Make sure that we are allowed to get it. We're not. Um, okay. You want to be looking at that. What we want to see here is when it cranks, these come up here. That means the governor's trying to tell it it needs fuel to start. And then hopefully it'll start injecting out of each one of them. You ready? So that was working. But okay, you see that's there, that's on full revs. So if it did start, you see it's now backing off as the governor loses pressure. That's a good sign. So that means that it is going back to, to idle. Down there, look. Oh yes. So that isn't a good start. That means we aren't going to be able to run this for very long. Well, we can try and investigate, see if we can rectify that issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that's a lot of oil. Right, we need to uh, rectify that somehow. Oh my god. We headed over to the motor factors to find some supplies to try and bodge the hole so we could seal it up just enough so we could drive the vehicle out of the hedge. No, no, I'll never look at it. Actually, no, I probably will. The account or mine. Right, we have, we have an inner tube, Jubilee clips, tiger seal, hot glue gun, an inverter and a jump pack. And we're going to attempt to cure this uh, heat exchanger leak with whatever we've got here. All because of that. All because of some idiot stole this and the rain's got in and it's rotted it out. So whoever you are, we will find you and kick you to death. That was a pair of scissors in there. Was it? Yeah. Not to worry. Oh. I think it might be working. Yeah, it is, it is hotting up. Right. I'll try and clean the area. Use an adequate amount of brake clean. I can't believe that I'm using a, a hot glue gun from like primary school. Fill the holes best I can with a hot glue gun. And then wipe tiger seal over the top. Can't get that where I want it. Glue gun, looks like I'm gonna fail. <laughs> Let's try the tiger seal. This is just buckled on me. It's so cheap, the... <laughs> The end just kinked. Again, everybody needs a Leatherman. Where would you be without it? Yes, that's what we want, all of it. Right, right over there, so we don't need light. This is gonna be a pain in the backside to apply. And what people won't appreciate is everything we kneel on kills you. Oh, it's, well, I'm in so much pain right now. Right, right that is a thing of beauty. Now, if that's been fair, I'll show, I'll show the general public what we have done. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> So, I'm now going to put a jubilee. A jubilee. <laughs> A jubilee clip down this side and a jubilee clip down that side because there's that stupid union in the middle and hopefully that'll just keep it down enough and the tiger seal can do its magic i'm actually really happy because we have actually got genuine jubilee clips not those cheap crafts put these on because everyone's like oh you'll die of aids by the age of five you'll get ball cancer we are all going to die, I just want everyone to remember that. So just do the things you want to do and enjoy yourself before that happens. 
And even if you live a very healthy life and eat everything as you should, um, you'll still die. So uh, you're that, very cheery today. No, I'm just it's not, not. I'm not not I'm cheery. I'm just sick of people telling me that if you do this, you do this, you do this. Like, well, yeah, but I will still die doing all these things. But I do think we are going to want a seven mil jubilee clip because it's going to speed this up. So seven mil. Jubilee clip, you need seven mil ratchet. Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna have the room to be honest. You know what would have been really handy? That little green snap on impact gun. <laughs> that has saved a lot of wrist action. You could do with the practice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is getting wild. This is not fun. This is unfun. This is field engineering. Boring, boring, pain. More pain. Pain. Lots of pain. Cramp. Right. My wrist feels like it's about to overheat and fall off. But we're making great progress. Have a look at this. <laughs> so we've even used a bit of high gauge water pipe or spray hose, whatever you want to call it. It's a rigid piece to clamp down over the rubber of the inner tube onto the lovely sticky tiger seal with the hot glue gun in the big hole. I think the hot glue gun did work on, oh, how do you work this sort of thing? I think the hot glue gun, we, there was one massive hole, which you will see in the other video, which uh, the hot glue gun has filled nicely. Yes. Let's nip that up. If this actually works, this will be one of my favourite bodges of all time. Is it? Is it like an Ian grade level? Oh, this is this is sub Ian. <laughs> this is something that Ian would look at and write down. Go, that was a bloody brilliant idea. Yeah, that was a bad Ian thing. I can't think of Ian now. I need him to ring me so I can remember how to speak Scottish or the Scottish accent to get in the mood. Yeah, you have to hear him say a couple of words before he can get into the. Scottish accent fully. Right, we'll clean the offending areas so then we can see if we have any more leaks. Can we film from here? Yeah, you'll get a break, yeah. Anything, but it isn't leaking. Not a drop. <laughs> okay. Right, we're out of gear. You ready? Yeah. Okay, take two. Okay. Help the start solenoid. Here we go. Please do not run away. water leak from the heat exchanger but I'm not worried about water 
but we do have gears. It didn't want to rev for a start. Did you see that, mate? I don't remember what it was doing. <laughs> have we got an exit plan? Are we able to try and back it up out of this area? Uh, well, I don't think it'll go over that. But, um... <laughs> could be stood for that long and then you just get it going and it's in this condition and it's literally pulled out of the hedge drove over a massive mound like it was nothing and it's absolutely fine it's actually in real good condition to be fair to it she's gone through some mud last time we played with it all the uh not much clay in it sprockets are pretty good look at that we've got collecting waste as it goes round just looks to me a little low this side. Oh, it might not be. Quite often you can have a torsion bar break when they've been stood. But it looks probably okay. Probably okay. A little bit of a tree in it still. <laughs> Need to get the old David Brown going next. So I definitely didn't just open the door without thinking about all the stuff that's fell through the back door. And we've broke his favourite. That box has been in his family that's, for that was the last great, 250 great, great, years. Great, 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 granddad. Passed down through generations. Smashed by some stupid radio. Mm. And an alternator. Least, I was only trying to find me yet. At least, like, at least oh, the, the, least the ruby survived. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most important bit. I'll put that in there so we don't get smashed. That was too easy almost, wasn't it? You were in a battery lead off. Yeah, I've done it. Cool. Right, I'll hatch down. <laughs> <laughs> so we are now here in Liverpool and we've got 
got Fair Canal over there to the right. Sorry, you've got where? Oh, sorry, Fair, Fair, not Fair Canal, is it? No, that's that, that's Birkenhead. Birkenhead. Yeah, let's ignore that. We'll edit that out. We've also got Forest of Scrap, which is what I'm interested in. And look at the size of these massive chains. You can tell it's nowhere near us because if they were the uh, I'm really disappointed we can't actually look around because apparently it's all closed and they've put this stupid film around so no one can actually see what you're doing because they're trying to wear the quick but now it's closed down anyway so now you can't see it we're paying rent on some scaffolding here no doubt that no one's using what a shame i wonder if we can buy it <laughs> you can actually see if you look through this crack inside, we'll cut this one in half. Yeah, that's not going to film. <laughs> no. There's someone rounding up the birds with a drone. <laughs> look at him go, what a bloke. That's pretty cool. This is like an 1852's version of Ocean Gate, probably without the controller. Made out of wood, because that's going to be safe. How could that work? It'd be like a blooming beer barrel, wouldn't it? Maybe it is just full of beer or cider. What does it say there? I can't read. Just put it so everyone can read it and then they can put it in text and then I can read the comments and see what it actually says makes sense doesn't it <laughs> it's so <f> <laughs> easy <laughs> what's that I don't know it. it almost looks so fake it couldn't be real doesn't it but wouldn't some I reckon if I get me leatherman I could probably pull one of these little corks out well I ain't gonna sink is it it's got anything in it Some diabolical welding here, look at this. All those armchair welders will look at that and go, oh, we've got it too hot. Shall we, um, shall we go home? Let's go home. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you again in another video.